I put a letter in an envelope, I put it in the sack, and then the postman came along and he put it on his back. Yeah. Pimp, pimp, twiddly dee, tally ho, jewel skies here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts about this city. And one of my favourite things is all the lovely little museums you've got all over the place. And London's newest museum is the Postal Museum here in Clerkenwell, just near the sorting office at Mount Pleasant. When I saw your letter, I had a heart of Hi, welcome to the Postal Museum. Originally, Henry VIII sort of first came up with the idea of having a, a postal service. I think it was kind of free for members of parliament or his court or whatever. But the people who would deliver the mail were just like private couriers. Anyway, King Charles I, he was the one who had his head chopped off. He decided that the postal service should be available to everybody. And so people started delivering the mail in these beautiful coaches and things like this. And it wasn't the bloke who sent the letter that had to pay, it was the person who received it. So if you really wanted to annoy your friend, you could just send him something really expensive in the post. I mean, obviously they'd get targeted. They'd have armed guards to deliver the mail. Now, it's really nice though. What I really like about this museum is it's really good for kids. There's loads of stuff to do. Oh look. Touch the button to hear the different tunes the guard would play to post his horn. <laughs> By the Victorian times, they all changed everything and it would be more fair if the person who sent the mail had to pay. So James Chalmers, a Scot, because Scots invent everything, he invented the Penny Black, which is the first ever postage stamp in the whole world. This is worth loads of money. That's really amazing. That's the, like, the engraving thing that they did. But these are worth a fortune. Absolutely. Right, so you open up this, you get your piece of paper, and you can write a message. Oh, is that a private message? Um, well, it might be, you never know. Uh, you can leave your phone number if you like. I don't know if you're looking for a husband or something. Alhambra must me, baby, I am the universe. It's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Did it go? Oh, oh. oh it it's done! <laughs> many, many years ago, my local co op had one of these systems to pay your bills. Oh, really? So you received your change back. You know, there's some other things in this museum that I remember from when I was a kid. It's making me feel so old. I can't believe things that we know from our childhood are in museums now. Oh, you've got a message. A message has arrived. Oh, have I? Yeah. Aham Pramazi, baby, I am the universe. <laughs> Mr. Jules looked at all the outfits and started to chuckle. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Hello, sir, he said. Which one amuses you? The postal uniform, said Mr. Jules. Why don't you try it, sir, said the shopkeeper. You're probably wondering why there's a telephone box over here, but of course the uh, post office controlled the telephone services as well. Classic, this one. This is uh, designed by Giles Gilbert Scott. He's the same guy who designed the Tate Modern Art Gallery and Batsy Power Station. Operator, operator, operator. Give me Worthington 2.3. I said, love all the stuff. This is what the telegram guys would have delivered the telegrams on. It looks like something from the Great Escape. Right? Yes, it does. Well, this was around the time of the Second World War. These post boxes, you can tell who was on the throne when the post box was installed. So this one says GR, so that must be George, as in George Rex. But over here is a really rare one, actually. This is really cool. ER, a lot of people think that's Elizabeth of Regina, but it isn't. It's Edward VIII, Rex. He was the one who abdicated. And if you can find some stamps with Edward VIII on, they're really rare. Oh, wow, look. It's like Tom Cruise in Minority Report. You can move all the stuff around. The museum's pretty new. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's only, I think it's, it only opened this year. This is excellent. Look, you put your head on a stamp, and then they'll email it to you. I recognize the writing and my heart went boom, and my hands were shaking and a spinner went through. And this is what they use for the current stamps over here. Look, on the coin, she faces to the right. But on a stamp, she faces to the left. I think that there's a rule that says you're not allowed to be on a stamp unless you're dead. Unless you're a member of the royal family. I think they've relaxed it a little bit lately. They put Freddie Mercury on a stamp. Yeah, but he was dead. But if you look really carefully, there's, he's on stage going like this, and there's all this mist and fog. And if you just look really carefully, just at the back, you can see Roger Taylor, the drummer, sort of just his head poking up like that. So for, for quite some time, he uh, retained the dubious honour of being the only person alive on a stamp, I think. Hello, is this at the emergency services? I've been abducted by a weird bloke with a bowler hat. Oh, God, we're, we're going to miss our train. We've reserved a place. 
on the mail train. This is still a sorting office here. This is Mount Pleasant sorting office. At one point, this was the biggest sorting office in the world, I think. In order to cut out all the traffic for the mail to be delivered efficiently, they created this special little mini train that went from Paddington under here. There's another sorting office over in Rathbone Place, I think. Stop following us around. Are you following me? Are you? you are... <laughs> choo choo! Excuse me, how often are the departures from this platform? Um, so the trains depart every 15 minutes. The train arriving at platform one will be the postal service to Paddington. For children of all ages, this apparently. Is it? Oh, oh so, we, we're, so we're acceptable, are we? Especially children your age. <laughs> there are real kids as well, except I'm not allowed to film them. It's a... My baby's on the train and yeah, it's yeah, there's room. Choo choo! My baby's on the train and he's coming home. Supposedly, this is the big carriage. But I mean, <laughs> I'm so proud. Because originally, this wasn't even designed for people, I mean, it was designed for just carrying the mail. So, if you're feeling a little cramped, that's why. And although we have a driver today, the original mail trains were drivers. <laughs> It was a huge network of automated electric trains running right under central London. This is excellent. It's like being an Indiana Jones, isn't it? Indy! 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 He said the left tunnel, Indy! The left tunnel! It's, it's, it really feels like it, doesn't it? I recognise the riding and my heart went boom And my hands were shaking and the spinner went the room I slowly broke the seal to make the feeling last And when I saw what you wrote, I gave a little gas We apologise for the delay. All change, please. All change. I'm stuck. I'm too oh, tall. Oh, God. <laughs> that was excellent. What do you think? It was, pretty, it was brilliant. This is definitely my favourite museum. It's so good. Did you enjoy it? Was fantastic. The... It was amazing, wasn't it? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. What? And a lot of memories, which I thought was nice. Amazing. It's all modern, isn't it? So it's brand new. Um, it's a museum, but it still evokes the oldie world. When you get down here, you sort of think, oh my God, it just feels like going back in time, doesn't it? Yeah. Can I just show up and get a ticket or what? Yeah, sure. So we are selling a limited number of uh, walk-up tickets every day from 10 o'clock. Uh, but we advise visitors to book their tickets in advance online. Your 15 minutes right slot. And the website is postermuseum.org. Over here, you can actually dress up. As a postal worker. Why is the floor moving? Because it's, it's a, a train. train, yeah, it's a postal train. There goes Julian off to work in the post office. I'd like to send a letter, please. Yeah, sure. Where would that be? Um, I want to send it to my grandmother. She lives on the moon. Oh, yeah, sure. How likely are you to recommend us to friends or family? Big green smiley face, because I think this is really excellent. It's, this is so much fun. They also have temporary exhibitions here, and my friend Dr. Sean Kingsley, a marine archaeologist, is guest curator of this one about a shipwreck called the Gare Sopa, which was travelling from India in the Second World War. Permission to come aboard, sir. Permission granted. Welcome to the sunken past. Step this way. We knew that there was silver on it, we knew that there was tea on it, but what we didn't know is when they went looking for the silver, they also found the mail room. And now what it is, it's the largest collection of lost mail from any wreck found anywhere in the world. And they were being sent to the Royal Mail Depot in the UK for distribution onto the wider world. Some letters were going to Edinburgh, some were going to Harleywood. It's kind of where the post was intended to go anyway, and it's arrived here, but 77 years late. And uh, there's this special magic pod here where you can actually hear the voices from the letters. And you can even get beamed to the bottom of the sea. So you can't send a human down there because the pressure is like putting a half ton car on your head, which nobody really wants. You sent robots. It's the rise of the robots. It's kind of like a poem from Lord Byron, you know, they got on this crazy little life raft, but they started drinking the salt water and sadly went crazy. Love, humour, drama, tragedy. This is an American, he's a sailor called Joe Moolam, and he's writing 28 pages home to his wife in America. Two of my fingernails got pulled out, the food's rubbish, but I'm cool. And he's cut out this newspaper clipping 
Wanted. Husbands for five young and pretty sisters, aged 16 to 24. One is daring, one is alluring, one is coy, one is wild. So he's written this to his wife saying, do you still love me or what do you reckon shall I apply? It's kind of <laughs> match.com for World War II India, you know. At the moment, nothing matters very much to me, but one thing, I'm terribly in love, Yvonne. I'm still awfully fond of him, my ex-boyfriend. This is the most desperate feeling because it's quite hopeless. Do you think I'm terribly abandoned? I'm not, I promise you. There's a lot of Christmas cards here which are very tender. This guy is a soldier up in the Northwest province and they're fighting the terrorists. He doesn't like it up here, but I'm making the best of a bad job. And uh, there's no entertainment. The women company is rubbish. Um, and he's taking these photos. This is like Osama bin Laden hiding up with the Taliban. But 70 years earlier, history is preceding it. One of the things that we've realized during this project is that some people were able to time travel. I swear to you that this is Wayne Rooney and this photo. <laughs> it's him. <laughs> and if you're interested in buying Sean's amazing book, Voices from the Deep, it's available in the souvenir bookshop. Or if you want to get a discount on it, you can just get in touch with me at jewelsguys.com. Because the mail sacks were made out of cloth, They'd, uh, they'd have attracted a lot of mice and rats, so they had to employ cats in the post office. So Mr. Tibbs, look, Tibbs the post office cat, he was paid one shilling a week. I don't know why, how he spent his money. Nowadays, we can't have a real cat in the museum, sadly. He's a real uh, cat. But we run this social media campaign where we invite uh, cat owners to submit a picture of their cat. Oh, cool. And each month, we choose one winning cat to wear a GPO official hat. We send them a special hat. Oh, nice. <laughs> Well, that's another Jules Guides signed, sealed and delivered. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my films, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Or if you want to find out more about me, you can have a look at my website, JulesGuides.com, where you can even contact me like, if you like, if you want a guided tour of London or something like that, where you can even leave me a donation on PayPal if you like, or become my Patreon. Cheers. My baby's on the train and he's coming home. Choo choo, choo choo, blow.